Okay, we are uh, studying the big book now. The purpose of studying the big book, there are a number of purposes, but the most important one is for us to find out where everything is and how it all ties together. And to get a very strong idea of how very, very important the big book is and that it contains for us everything we need to know about recovery. Everything else in the literature is peripheral to the big book. Some of us is contrary. But this is a book that was, <clears throat> that was written and published for the purpose of being sent out to the people all around the country and, and in Canada and other English-speaking countries who did not have AA and had no way of contacting AA. And the idea was that this book would be sufficient for anyone who wishes to use it to recover from the disease of alcoholism. This book and this book alone. Now, of course, in the 11th chapter, when we get there, we'll find that there was an effort made to teach the new people out there about how they could form their own group. And uh, there's quite a bit of good information in that 11th chapter about that. The basic idea of this book was to uh, help the new, new person to overcome their denial by allowing them to identify themselves with the people in the book and to see that they uh, have something which is more than just heavy drinking, more than just something that's a, uh, a lack of willpower, but that in fact they have an illness and that they need help. It's also, along with breaking down denial, it's also designed specifically to bring a lot of hope to the new person because one of the hallmarks of alcoholism is a sense of hopelessness. And uh, then, of course, once the denial is overcome and the hopelessness has disappeared and the sense of hopefulness has come, then the book is designed to teach people precisely how to go about this business of recovery. In order for us to fully understand the big book, it's important for us to understand why it was written and how it was written. And we're told right at the beginning of the book what's going on here. I guess maybe the, the single most important thing to know in the beginning about the big book is that it is a history. It is not a philosophy. It is not a collection of opinions. It is a history of recovery. It is the history of the recovery of those who wrote the book, those who were there in the very beginning. And as such, it is a true story. And it is not designed to be a, a looked at as if somebody was making this up and it might be a good idea and it might not. The truth is that the people who wrote this book had experienced what they wrote about. And as a result of that experience, they have recovered. And when we understand that the big book is a history, that it is true, and that it is reciting the real life adventures of people who wrote it, then we get an idea of what it's really talking about. For example, when it when you hear around the rooms all the time, this is a we program. Well, if you ever stop to think about that, then you wonder what in the hell they mean by that. What does that mean? That we do our steps together? That couldn't mean that. That uh, maybe it only means that the unity of the fellowship is critical for the recovery of each of us, and that we can all agree to. But the we that's used in the big book is the we, of the collective we of those who wrote the book. <coughs> what it's really saying is we did this, and we did that, and when we did this, this is what happened to us. And more than that, we truly believe that if you do what we did, you too will recover. That's what it's really saying. If you look at the 12 steps, you'll find that there is a, an implied we in front of each of the steps. Bill hated to repeat himself, and so he just left it off, but it's there. The 
12 steps of saying, this is what we did. In fact, remember what, uh, what Mark just read. Here are the steps we took. And we, we read that literally. We'll understand that what we're being, what's being displayed here for us is the exact uh, method which the old timers, the ones who wrote the book and contributed the book, the methods they used to recover. And that's what was intended. That's what the big book really is. So those who, who uh, like to uh, denigrate the big book, put it down, denigrate those who depend on the big book, and the, the, the wise guys around, there are lots of them, tell you, oh, you yeah, know, I don't worry about that big book, just don't drink and go to meetings. You know, stuff like, uh, you're only as sick as your secrets, and if you don't get it all out, if you don't open your mouth and get it all out, you'll open a bottle and drink this stuff just goes on. It's all nonsense. Absolute nonsense. So if, when you teach the big book to your sponsees, remember that the first thing they have to do is read the book. <laughs> the book. That means the whole book. It doesn't mean your Reader's Digest expurgated version, or as, as my sponsor sees the version, the whole book because it was written for the new person. Specifically, every word here was written for the new person. I, I realize a lot of the stories are new. The stories have the same purpose today as they had 35, 65 years ago. They're there for the purpose of the newcomer being able to identify themselves with real life people who are telling their true story be able to say, well, I'm just like that. This is the way, that's the way I drank. That's what happened to me. And beyond that, each of these people who was telling the story in the back of the book, or her story, is saying, not only was I just like you, not only was I afflicted with a disease which was trying to kill me, not only was I spiritually bankrupt and filled with uh, uh, terror and bewilderment, frustration and despair, but I recovered from that. And here's the way I recovered. And it lays out the method these people use to recover. Now, when we get to the forward of the first edition, we're going to find that this is spelled out for us in the very first few words in the big book. How can anybody miss this? It's incredible to me that the, that, that the, the, abject lack of knowledge about the big book that we find in the room these days. And it's all here. Anything that we're going to learn here in this workshop isn't, isn't, isn't my idea. What we're learning is what's in the book. I'm going to give you a few ideas of my own that have developed over the last many, many years, but I'll label them as such when we get to them. Open your books up to the forward of the first edition, please. We're now going to be getting some basic data about what this book is, what it's all about, why it was written, what's the purpose of it. So on page 13, or, yeah, page 13, X triple I, in the Roman numerals. Or to the first edition. This is the board that has appeared in the first printing of the first edition in 1939. Now please notice that this has never been changed. There were 23 printings, I think, of the first edition. They never changed the board. It's always been the same. And it states everything so beautifully, so succinctly. And we're going to find the, all the seeds of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous are right here in these this page and a quarter. We, now here we go with we. You see what this we is here? It's a collective we of saying we, meaning all of us of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Stop and think about how many thoughts there are in that one sentence. This, 
This is a good illustration, guys, of how you have to read the big book. You've got to parse the sentences. You've got to think it through. There will be many sentences with three and sometimes four profound thoughts in one sentence. It's very, very, very dense. And it cannot be understood by a scanning perusal. It requires study. We have Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered. Now, there are, are many who will poo-poo the word recovery here, but it's used many times in the big book. And it means precisely this, that they have found through the use of these steps and having had a spiritual awakening, that the symptoms of alcoholism have been removed. The obsession and compulsion to drink has been removed. They're no longer walking around with untreated alcoholism. And they have found that the disease, in terms of the mental obsession and compulsion to drink, has been placed in full and complete remission. This does not mean that they have been cured of the physical allergy, which remains always for the rest of our lives. Apparently, we're born with it. But certainly, once it develops, it doesn't go away. The idea that we take one drink and we trigger the, the phenomenal craving, this allergic reaction, this sentence does not imply that that has been removed because it is not and never was. But remember what we're talking about here, because this is very precise. So long as we do not take alcohol into our systems, this physical problem we have is never triggered, is it? It's, it's absolutely essential that we have alcohol in our system before the phenomenon of craving will kick in. The allergy, then, is not one which is with its, uh, sitting there ready to bite us at any time unless we drink. Which means, just as we learned, and this is really important when we get to the first step, that we're going to have to come to the conclusion and accept as an absolute fact that we can never safely drink alcohol again in any form whatsoever because to do so will trigger this allergy, this phenomenon of craving. And once that kicks in, we can't stop drinking. So then really the question goes back to this. What is it that we have to do to quell the obsession and compulsion to drink? Yes, dear. I've got one quick question. Uh, since we have more than 100 men and women, uh, this program started June 10, 1935. The book was written in 38. When did Marty Mann join the program? Marty Mann was, uh, was, became a member at the time that the first uh, manuscript was produced. There's evidence in the literature that Bill sent her a copy of his original manuscript, charged her three dollars and fifty cents for it, and told her that she would get a hard copy of the book free when it was published. So it was some time in the interregnum between the time that he produced the original transcript and that was then edited and then sent to the publishers. And of course, it sat with the publishers for a while until they got enough money to pay for the first run of 5,000 copies. So Marty was uh, at least around the program for probably four or five months, six months maybe, before the actual hardcover cover was printed. But she, but she had received, Marty Mann was the first woman in AA, by the way. And uh, there were several that were following along right after her. When you hear this nonsense about you can't have a man can't sponsor a woman, you ask yourself, how the hell did Marty Kent get sober? You know, wasn't that, nobody could talk to her. And Marty, we sorry we can't talk to you, you're a woman. There's just so much nonsense like that, just one of the one of the men. So what we're looking at here, guys, is a a sentence which is telling us that these 100 have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Now, if you take that phrase, a hopeless state of mind and body, you'll know what recovery means. The whole idea of hopelessness then becomes critical, doesn't it? When we read that word, we have to understand that, that 
that in the very dense way the big book is written, it is adding another element to this whole problem that the newcomer, in almost every case, has a sense of hopelessness. Now, that takes us back to what we first considered about the big book. The big book is designed to overcome that hopelessness and to bring hope. Now, then the next sentence is all you need to know about what this book contains and why it was written and the standpoint or viewpoint from which the big book was written. To show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. If you just remember that, you'll always remember what you're reading, that this is a history. That this book was written to show those people out there in Cucamonga and Podunk and in Baton Rouge and wherever the book landed, those people who didn't have AA, didn't have any way to talk to other alcoholics, to show them precisely how the first 100 recovered. That's why I was written. The word precisely is very important here. There isn't any wiggle room in the big book. There are no weasel words in the big book. It never once says, oh golly gee whiz, it'd be kind of nice if you sort of did this. As Mark just read, it's full of must. And must in the big book means or else. It's full of what the philosophers call categorical imperatives. This is what we have to do if we wish to recover. That's what they're telling us. They're saying this is precisely what we did, and in our experience, this is the only thing that works. Now keep in mind that of the 100, they were 100,000 press, several thousand who wandered in, in and out through the meetings over those last three years. Many of them went out into the hinterlands and, and were still in recovery. Some were even beginning to put together groups around them, but there were only three recognized groups at the time of the writing of the meeting, of the big book. In New York and Akron and in Cleveland, but there were, according to literature, there were, all, there were people scattered all over who had been exposed to AA or been exposed to the recovery program of the, uh, of the Oxfordians who were scattered all around. But these 100 were the ones who were the type, the more or less highly knit group that was responsible for the writing of the big book. So to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. Now this precisely word means that the instructions are contained herein. And these instructions tell us exactly what we ought to do. For example, if you open up the big book to the fourth step, which begins on page 65, you will find that the instructions there are quite precise. They tell us exactly what we are to do. And yet, if you are in, a, in an AA in recovery these days, you're more likely than not somebody's going to hand you a form to fill out which bear a little resemblance to the precise directions contained in this book. And completely ignores one of the basic tenets of recovery through the fourth step, which is that we do not compare ourselves with others or others with us. We do not, because it, because it blurs all the edges. We're trying to find what is the truth about things. How many times have you ever heard that the four step includes the, 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 uh, an ideal for a future sex life? How many times have we been told that we are not to have an affair for the first year? We even find that in one part of a literature in this scurrilous little publication which they call Living Sober which is a terrible thing, it's a terrible book. It doesn't have to do with the big book of the steps, it's a bunch of human solution stuff. And it wasn't written for us, it was written for the treatment center. That's the only kind of stuff they'll buy. They don't want to do with the big book, most of it. But 
But in there we'll find these, these, these wonderful words of wisdom that don't have them there for a year. Nobody has ever explained to me what's magic about a year. What the hell has that got to do with anything? There are a whole bunch of us who shouldn't have a, 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 an affair ever. <laughs> and there are others who can handle it very nicely right away. Who in the hell ever, I can't imagine who, what, how can people sleep at night when they put together this kind of nonsense and pawn it off as being recovered? Ridiculous. But it goes directly against the big book. The big book tells us we're turning all things to God. And it tells us what to do if we, if we are in doubt about any kind of a, a sexual matter or a, or a, a, a relationship. We take it to God and we ask him what he wants us to do. Turn all things to the Father, what it says. Not to sponsors, not to facilitators, not to grand gurus of the AA rooms, the powers of be, and all those wonderful folks, the AA politicians. None of these folks are relevant to us. Our rel the relevant force in the universe is God. And our partnership with him is what we're striving to establish here. And as sponsors, that's our job. To help our sponsees get from a place of rebellion and defiance and denial to a place of surrender and obedience. It's only there that they're going to find peace. We cannot bring them sobriety. We can bring them the steps. We can bring them our experience. Once in a while, we may be able to counsel them in some aspect of their lives, which might be helpful, might not. We do our best. Big Book says this, counsel with others is sometimes valuable, but we always let God be the final judge. Well, we human beings got no business judging each other. We're, we're goofy. So it goes on to say this, speaking of uh, other alcoholics now, for them we hope these pages will prove to so convincing that no further authentication will be necessary. Did you ever stop and think what that means? That's pretty strong, isn't it? They're hoping that what they have written here will be so convincing to the new person that when they pick this book up and made it, they'll say, yeah, 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 that's me, that's for sure. Boy, I can see myself here. Not to run around saying, well, who are these bunch of middle-aged and older white guys, you know, these wasps out there, just making all this crap up and plowing it up on us. Guys sitting around a big cigar in their lap, yeah, you know, and trying to make a buck on us, poor guys. Besides which, this is modern times, guys. The big book is outmoded. It's nice, kind of, uh, to sort of praise and see what the hell. You can get a laugh out of it here and there. But really, your local facilitator at your local treatment center knows how to recover now. If you don't feel good, go get some more pills. So it's saying, let's, let's hope that these pages will prove so convincing that you won't need any further authentication. Well, Dr. Silkworth gave us that authentication. And it's in his the little letter that he wrote, which was published just before his opinion. And it's important to understand where that came from. Dr. Silkworth had been watching the development of AA for the three years, three and a half years before he wrote that letter. He had seen with his own eyes his patients that he couldn't help, that he had discarded off in the hopeless war. He knew there was nothing that he or his psychiatrists or all of his scientific stuff or his doctors had acupuncturists and hypnotists and all, none of that did any good. These people were hopeless and he know it. And lo and behold, here were these guys traipsing in there, these uh, recovering alcoholics, 
And they would come in and they would sit there and talk to one of these guys that he'd given up on and they'd talk for a little while and they'd talk some more. And they might come back the next day and they'd talk some more. And all of a sudden he'd see something very strange. Here they were, they were crying together. Crying together. What the hell is this? That's, that's not melodrama treatment, that's not uh, uh, any kind of psychiatry. They're just crying. A couple of days later, this helpless, hopeless drunk would get up and walk out of his hospital, and guess what? In 30 days, he'd be back, helping the next guy in the next day. And this happened over and over and over again. Dr. Silkworth then had to realize that what these people had was real. It worked. So in his letter, he says, if you can believe whatever these men say about themselves. He gave that tremendous endorsement, which is in effect saying that this book is true. Because what they're saying about themselves is what this book represents. This book is the history of what they did. And he's saying these guys are telling you the truth. And so they're saying we hope that no further authentication will be necessary. Now then, if you stop and think about it, guys, this is, what, 65 years later, 68 years later? And son of a gun, people using this book, millions of them have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. 1939, you could probably legitimately say, what the hell are these guys you only hired up. What's this proof? Not so anymore. Millions of recovery later. It is absolutely so that what they wrote about in this book works. It just works. And it works for everybody. And nobody's left out. The only thing that's required is that you follow the damn direction. You need to find somebody if you have them who knows what those directions are and lead you to them and show you how they work. Help you learn the big book and what's in there. If you're, most of you have been around a long time, I know you're here because you want to be better sponsors and I honor you for that. Lack of good sponsorship is by far and away the worst problem in AA today. It's, just, it's, an, it's an epidemic of nonsense out there. People who are using sponsorship for the development of their own egos, building up their own resume so that they can go on into a politics or whatever they finally do. I don't know, but I can tell you this: that if you're, if you are, if you are here because, and I know you are, because you want to be able to do God's work better, and more efficiently, more effectively, and God bless you. So that's it. the only reason I'm here. You know, we have a mission. We have a purpose in life. Not very many people alive today have a purpose in life, but we do. They'll call it our holy mission. Our real purpose, the big book says, is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people about us. And by God, that's what we're doing here. 